Welcome to Composition 2. My name is Dan Martin and I'm your instructor this summer. I've been teaching writing courses at UCF for about 10 years. I've taught online, face-to-face, -face, and in mediated environments, so I know quite a bit about teaching online and teaching in general. I do know that we will never actually see each other in this class, so these videos are an attempt to create some kind of personalization between you and me and the course. We've got six weeks to accomplish quite a bit, so I figured I would make some videos to help you follow the course. The videos will allow me to emphasize certain things about the course that I can't really do with writing alone. So pay attention to the videos, because like I said, I'll highlight information that I feel is more difficult to understand without some kind of face-to-face -face, uh, interaction. The first video will take us through the syllabus and how to navigate through the course. I'm sure all of you know by now that we are using Canvas and not web courses for online teaching and learning, so this video will help us with the layout of Canvas for this course. The other videos will specifically address assignments, readings, and concepts about writing and research that I feel you need a bit more understanding of, like I mentioned a few seconds ago. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, if you click on the home page on the left side of the Canvas screen, you will see the layout of the entire course. There are four modules for the course, and we will work through each module one at a time. I'll have a video for you to watch that will set up each module and highlight key pieces of information. At the top of the home page is an instructor introduction. Read that, it's brief. There are also links for technical support. I believe the links and the phone numbers are still accurate, although they may reflect a web course's picture or a module design. I'll get those updated as soon as I can. I'm still working through some of the changes between web courses and Canvas. There's a syllabus link, which we will discuss more closely in this particular video, and a course schedule. Make sure you look over the course schedule carefully and be aware of due dates and deadlines because you can't make up work in this course and you can't turn in anything late. It's just not fair to any one of us to allow late work, including myself, because we only have six weeks, late grading and late submissions will drag the class down and leave us constantly lagging behind. We just can't afford to do that. Not in a six-week online course. In a 16-week face-to-face course, it's a little different. We can work with some things and give you some leeway, but online in six weeks, it's just virtually impossible. So make sure you know what you're getting yourself into with this class and the deadlines. Now let's take a closer look at the syllabus. At the top, you'll find course information and my email address. You can use the email in the course or my official UCF email address. I don't have face-to-face -face office hours, so my office information is not really relevant. But I'm available via email all the time. Just send me an email through Canvas, and I will get back to you within 24 hours, probably sooner. Also, make sure you've taken 1101 or you've received AP credit for 1101 before continuing with this course you'll see the course description and basically this class examines the relationship between research and writing you will be asked to explore a topic of your choice that is related to writing and literacy in some, some shape or form now I know that sounds a bit scary or maybe a bit boring but writing is essentially connected to everything that we do so you could explore how writing works in your discipline, in your major, or your future profession. Uh, you could look at other elements of literacy development like visual literacy or persuasion, uh, argumentation. I'll provide many, many examples of what students have done in the past, so don't worry. There is definitely something that can connect with your interest and the course. So essentially, this is a writing studies course, but I want you to find something that you're interested in that you can bring into the study of writing. For example, I've had students examine the role of the monster in the horror film. I've had students examine persuasive elements in advertising. Um, I've had students look at particular types of advertising and investigate what makes a particular type of ad more or less persuasive. 
I've had students look at the writing habits of professional writers, the writing habits of musicians, the reading habits of professional writers. There are numerous, numerous, unlimited possibilities with topics. So don't even worry about that. We'll have brainstorming assignments and discussions within the course to help us figure out a topic. I also want to take a minute to explain your major assignments for the course. It's important to understand that all of your papers are connected. The course is designed to teach you how to conduct research and deliver the results of your research to a particular audience using a particular genre. The first assignment teaches you how to find a research question and it's probably the most important part of research and writing. This will help you tremendously for your future courses. Learning how to find and validate your own research questions and focuses is vital to succeeding in college. You don't want to rely on teachers and professors to tell you what to research and write about. Learn how to find relevant questions to answer and learn how to validate those questions to prove they are relevant and important. Once we locate a relevant research question, I'll teach you how to collect sources, including primary research and data to help analyze for the answer to your research question. Our last assignment will be an attempt to put everything together and answer our research question. So to recap, we locate a research question, validate that question, then collect sources and data that we can use to answer the question, and then we answer the question. Right? You'll also see that we have some course objectives below the course description. Read over those. We will attempt to meet all of these objectives this summer. I also want to take a minute to say that I do allow you to revise your three major paper assignments as many times as you would like. And you can read about my revision policy in the syllabus. Uh, there are very specific guidelines about what you need to do, um, but just know that you are allowed to revise your three major assignments as many times as you would like. We do have a required text. Here's a picture of it make sure you get the text without the readings. Most of our course readings are linked into the course and I did my best to reduce the amount you had to pay for a book but this book supplements and complements what we what we do in this course uh, fairly well so please get the book we will read several chapters in the book. We use a plus minus grading scale not my favorite but it's what it is here is the breakdown of your assignments and percentages. Discussion posts count for 25% of your grade, so make sure your posts follow the directions and guidelines accurately. And make sure you post on time and that your post provides substance. We don't meet in class, so our class time is essentially made up through discussion posts. It's the only chance I have to evaluate what kind of student you are, so please make sure your posts follow directions. Uh, make us want to read your work, but don't overpost. No one wants to read about ideas outside the scope of the assignment and the course. We all have to read a tremendous amount of words this semester. Let's all help each other by making each one of those words count. Notice that your three major papers account for 60% of your grade, which I discussed briefly earlier in the video. And I will discuss each major assignment in more depth on future videos, like I mentioned earlier as well. There will be a section in each module video devoted to explaining the major paper assignments in great detail. Okay, There are group discussion posts where four to five students uh, in a particular group will answer and address a set of questions about a particular reading, while other groups of four to five students examine uh, and address other sets of questions about the same reading and then all of the groups will examine uh, other students responses from other groups. There are also regular discussion posts so I tried to break it up a little bit just to make it a little bit more interesting instead of just constantly question discussion post question discussion post this way it'll give us a little bit of a breakup uh, with groups and individual postings. There is peer review. Peer review uh, is an opportunity for you to draft out your work and get some feedback on it before you submit it for an actual grade. 
Peer review is very important. You've got to learn to draft papers well in advance and get feedback. And you've got to understand that you may need to draft your paper several times. Uh, it's normal. Everybody has to draft quite a bit in order to get a good final product. So you have to look at peer review and workshops that give you an opportunity to share your work with others before you submit it for a grade or for a deadline. Um, it's important. There is no attendance policy, obviously, but keep in mind that we are jamming 16 weeks worth of work into six weeks, and every week requires hours and hours of work. Understand that online courses are usually more work than a face-to-face -face course because of all of the reading and writing that we have to do. Also, please don't plagiarize. If you get caught, it's just not worth it. I don't set out to check every single paper. If I'm suspicious of something, I may start to look a little bit more closely, but I basically accept that all of you are adults and I trust all of you until you give me a reason not to. If you have a disability that needs to be recognized, please contact Disability Services and then they will contact me and then I can help you. I can't really do anything for you in the course until you've contacted Disability Services and as soon as they email me I can accommodate you. Also be aware of copyright issues with photos or videos and make sure you avoid posting private information about this course or anyone in this course on public websites. Okay now if you click on the protocols link I'll go over some of the information in this section. As far as emails are concerned, I will respond to you immediately. But if you send me an email after 9 p.m. or on the weekend, do not expect an immediate response. There are occasions where I'll be up past 9 and I may check my email and respond to you. But I do reserve the right to, you know, go to sleep and enjoy myself on the weekend but I do check my email on the weekend and I will get back to you as soon as possible but during the week uh, Monday through Friday say you know 8 in the morning till you know 9 at night I frequently check my email and attempt to respond to you as quickly as possible now as far as emails there is a three before me policy so make sure that you read that policy it's really important because a lot of the emails I get from these online courses uh, include questions that could be answered in the actual course material if you were to reread the course material or revisit some of the sections uh, in the course you will find the answers to I would say 75 percent of your questions if you have a question that uh, specifically addresses your work, your paper, that's different. So I have a policy set up. Uh, it's called the three before me. Make sure you read over it. It asks you to basically ask students in the course to answer your question. And then if they can't, uh, I will certainly step in and answer your question for you. This will just help me reduce the number of emails that do not require uh, my knowledge to answer. Make sure that you follow all of the formatting rules for discussion posts and papers. Uh, we use MLA in here. There are also other minor formatting issues that need to be addressed. Same thing with the uh, viruses section. There are always problems with technology. Uh, this is an online course, so unfortunately technology problems just can't be an excuse. You've got to be aware of what's going on, and you have to back up everything. Uh, I have to do the same thing. So uh, obviously if there are Canvas technology problems that affect all of us, we'll address those as we go. But for the most part, you have to maintain your own uh, backup, and you have to be aware that technology is problematic and things can happen. So you have to 
plan ahead and attempt to reduce those problems. The course is on a time release, so you can't work ahead. Each module will open as we complete the previous module. Uh, there are also uh, protocol, basic net protocol, so just you know, make sure to be nice to each other when we're talking or discussing uh, issues in the uh, discussion posting board. That concludes the video syllabus. I look forward to all of your contributions in the course. Thank you.